going to make ciabatta bread, focaccia, and bread six using the same one, two, three bread recipe. The bread recipe will be adjusted to increase the quantity to make three batches of the one, two, three recipe. Thus we add a half more of each so the water becomes 1.5 cups the yeast becomes 3 teaspoons and the flour becomes 4.5 cups the first item that will be put together will be the ciabatta bread the ciabatta term comes from Italian which means slipper the loaf of bread when baked is flat usually looks like an old slipper. The basic recipe can be adjusted by adding just a little bit more water to the mixture so that the dough becomes softer. We have the bread dough now. This is uh, the increased recipe that I mentioned and uh, I'm going to divide this into three parts because I'm going to make a ciabatta roll, focaccia, and also breadsticks. So roughly, uh, the dough divided in three. And we just set some aside in a paper towel for a few minutes. Now the dough is uh, a little bit softer than I mentioned uh, in the beginning in that I added a little bit more water. So instead of 1.5 cups of water, I added uh, almost a fourth more. So I'm shaping this into a uh, loaf which resembles, if you can picture this, a slipper, and that's why it's called a ciabatta roll. And I'm going to stretch this out like so. Now this will be set aside and it will have to rise probably for another 30 minutes or so, so we're going to do this in different steps. So I'm going to place this on a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick on this other board. And then I'm going to cover it with a dry towel and then set this aside for the set approximately 30 minutes. Now the next item uh, is going to be a fogaccia. Now fogaccia is a term that's uh, used to to actually describe a flat type of bread. It's a little bit different than pizza in that uh, the dough itself is thicker. And so what you do with a focaccia is that you can either stretch it out like I'm doing or you can get a rolling pin like so, and kind of make it in, in the shape that you wish. Now the fogaccia is kind of irregular in shape, there's no specific shape. If you're going to bake it on a uh, pizza stone, like I'm going to bake it, the shape is immaterial. Sometimes people will bake these in 
uh, like for example rectangular bunk pans and so forth, then you can spread it out and uh, kind of position it on the pan the way you wish. Uh, focaccios have been placed on a uh, pizza peel, a wooden uh, item that carries the focaccia to the oven. And so at this stage of the game, uh, you can kind of push down on top of it and put little depressions with your fingers. Then you distribute some olive oil on top. And with the pastry brush, kind of brush in the olive oil. Now, focaccia toppies, toppings vary. This is a, just a simple one, and it's going to be olive oil and a little bit of salt. And so what you do then is you, you sprinkle a little salt on the top, like so. Now, if you also want to, you can put a little pepper on it or a little bit of Italian uh, seasoning like uh, either oregano or uh, pizza seasoning, one of the two. And so, in this case, I'm, I'm just going to put a little bit of oregano on top, like so. Now some of the Italian bakeries, especially around the San Francisco area, you uh, can buy focaccia which has a thin layer of tomato sauce on it. And what they do is they also cut up green onions in small like quarter inch pieces and spread the onions on top of the focaccia. You can also put other items on top of this. Uh, for example, sometimes you can find focaccia with caramelized onions spread on top, so it, it varies. In Italy, you can also buy focaccia which is sweet. In other words, uh, instead of salt base, they put a little bit of sugar and they also incorporate uh, either fresh uh, grapes in the focaccia or dried raisins. Uh, in the fogaccia. So fogaccia means actually a flatbread uh, cooked in the oven with some kind of a minimal topping on it, not as complex, as uh, complicated as a pizza topping. As I mentioned, the fogaccia bread is a flatbread and at this point it is uh, ready to go into the oven. And the oven should be probably at about 400 degrees or 425 degrees. And as you can see, the focaccia bread is ready to go. In the center of the pizza stone. And uh, it should take probably 10 to 15 minutes uh, to cook. So when it's nice and brown, then you can remove it and uh, eat it uh, warm or let it cool a little bit. Okay, the next item uh, will be the breadstick using, again, approximately one-third of the dough. And to uh, start out, I'm using a... Uh, pan here, cookie sheet pan, either one, putting a little bit of olive oil and then with a little piece of paper towel 
I, uh, and I spread the oil out all the way around. Now, breadsticks, the way I start out is that I kind of uh, make this into a rectangular shape. And so I have to play around with this until I get it to the thickness and length that I wish. And today I'm kind of working around the uh, ciabatta roll, the breadsticks, and the fogaccia. So normally uh, I embark upon making only one of these uh, three things at the same time. So you roll this out. I say pretty much in the shape of a rectangle, like so. And I would imagine that if you were to measure this, it'd probably be about a quarter of an inch or so in thickness. Now the way I start is that I divide this in four parts. I use a pizza cutter. Like so. And I spread just a little bit of olive oil. Actually, I should have probably uh, done that before I cut it. But so that's just to, to get a little bit of oil on the surface. take uh, each fourth and I cut that into little strips like this. And then I take each strip and sometimes I twist it. Sometimes I don't. And I just lay those down like so. Stretch them out. Like so. process. And you can judge as you're going along, like for example now I should be about half a pan full, so it means that the next one's over I'll have to compress it a little bit more. Now sometimes people like to Coat these with either poppy seeds or sesame seeds, and you can do this by rolling each little bread stick into the poppy seeds or the sesame seeds before you put it on the pan.
Also, uh, if, when I get more in the pan, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of salt on the top surface. And uh, you could do that before you cut them if you wish. In my case, I'm going to use just a small amount of salt. And there you have your breadsticks pretty much ready to go into the oven. So. The fogaccia, as you can see, is beginning to rise and it's not quite brown, but still has probably about between 5 and 10 minutes left to go. Okay, the focaccia appears to be pretty close to being done. If you look at the bottom, it's nice and brown. You take this out, put it on a cooling rack for a few seconds. So there's the focaccia. And the next item to go in is the uh, breadsticks. So in order to uh, accomplish this, I'm, rather than putting them directly on the pizza stone, I'm going to put a, a rack just above the pizza stone. minutes. I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes and uh, hopefully by that time they'll be ready. The focaccia now is uh, pretty much ready and you can see on the bottom nice and brown. At this point uh, one could slice it into, into pieces like so or smaller and just serve it. Sometimes uh, fogaccia is used to make sandwiches. So if you wanted to make sandwiches, you could cut this into squares and then slice it horizontally and then fill the fogaccia with your favorite sandwich uh, filling. Salami, ham, turkey, whatever it might be. So thus you have fogaccia and uh, serve it as an accompaniment to a meal place of bread or you could use it to make sandwiches. Okay, these are the uh, breadsticks, nice and brown. So uh, just let them sit in the uh, pan for a few minutes until they cool off and then uh, they can be stored uh, in, in kind of an airtight bag. They can also be frozen. Uh, what I do is I usually divide them in about thirds and uh, store about a third for consumption right now and then the others I put in a freezer, Ziploc bag and freeze them and I pull them out as I need them. Then I'm going back to the uh, ciabatta bread which I started a while back and uh, this is risen a little bit and so the way this works now is I put a little bit of uh, cornmeal mix, we call it the cornmeal mix on the bread peel so that the bread will slide off easily and what I do is I just flip this over like so and put this on the peel. And what I do is I usually uh, 
put a few slices with this sharp knife across the top and then kind of shape the bread the way I want it. Now sometimes it helps to uh, put some water spray in the oven. Now what the water does is the spray settles down on the bread dough and it allows it to crisp up a little bit. So what I do then is I put this in the oven, I open the door jar and I spray in some water maybe two or three times during the time that it cooks and I plan on this probably taking uh, close to 30 minutes until it's done. Okay, so I'm going to put this in here. Actually, I should take out the rack which I put in here before and I forgot to do so. And I put the bread right in the middle. And I don't want too much of the heat to escape, but what I do is I just spray some water in here. And I'm probably going to do this a couple of times. So I'll set the timer now for uh, 30 minutes total. So about after 10 minutes, I'll check it out and give it another spray. Yeah, I just removed the uh, ciabatta bread, which unfortunately <laughs> turned out to be a little bit uh, higher than the typical ciabatta bread. But I think it uh, looks like the dough itself is pretty well and uh, the bread is brown and the bottom is nice and dark. So this will kind of make a nice uh, addition to any meal. Here we have a loaf of bread, we have a focaccia, and we have the breadsticks and all made with the one, two, three recipe that I gave previously in the other video in uh, attempting to show you how to use the bread machine and the KitchenAid mixer to make bread dough for the pizza and the calzone. So, in concluding this, we say buon appetito. Happy baking. Happy baking. <laughs>